Welcome to the man cave. We just got something in. Come on, Deacon. What do we got here? What is this? What is this? Huh? It's from Italy. This is for Deacon, actually. Well, we have here what appears to be a windscreen. Yep. And that's going to get attached. This puppy. That looks like it's got some painting I'm going to have to do on this. Oh, how's it going? So, this is going to be very exciting. We're going to have something that's going to stick out probably about this far. So I'll have to interrupt this other job I was doing, which was putting on these lights um, and getting those wired up. I didn't have the switch in, so I've got these guys here. So, uh, so let me get a little bit organized. Okay, Deacon? Okay, now they've got this unpacked. It's um, really quite rough. You see the, I don't know if that's the mold release or the whatever on it, but who cares? It's gonna be covered with decals, right? So Deacon and I are, we're gonna rattle can this thing and then I'll start pulling parts off the 690. I'll get a couple coats on here and um, we'll go from there. Everything. Starting with the tank bag. We'll just set that over here. side I wonder if there's a I haven't found it really good 
alternative decal set. Anyway, so the headlight is only held on with two screws. Only reason I'm wearing these blue gloves is not because I'm afraid my hand's going to get greasy, it's because of the paint. I always kind of laugh at guys who wear work on their bike and they put on gloves because they don't want to get any grease into their fingernails. Sheepskin. And then I just got this one connector uh, to take off. Okay, I've just pulled off the headlight. Um, it just takes a, one screw on each side. Uh, normally it's right there, but I had this rotated out, so I drilled another hole um, here so that Deacon had more room to stick his nose. And then, um, because these wouldn't fit on this little post down there, I had to tie it down uh, with that. So anyway, so once I hopefully this will all go in that fairing that's out there being dried and um, set that here with the rest of the stuff and, um, and I want to pull off the speedo and looks like it just uses these screws right there and uh, by the way this is the uh, USB ports I've added to charge my GoPro that's over on the Deacon cam it's plugged into the accessory plugs uh, that are switched and the my phone um, USB is on on the all the, on all the time side and um, so I'll now fi figure out how to pull the speedo off I've never done that before So there's three screws right behind this thing. I'm stopping my um, accessory lamp project until I get this fairing on. Um, okay, it looks like it only needs two of those screws. The middle one can stay. All right, I just pulled these out there. So only two of those need to stay that one can be there for now there we go guess just push that little button there and then um, of course all these other cables as it would have it are all running through the this little mount oh but I guess they would get released once I take the back off of the Speedo. And for that, I'm gonna need not this. So. Okay, so these are a T20. holding the speedo onto this uh, plastic bracket. T20 Torx. One. Two. Three. Right then, must be one more. Nope. Okay, so this guy just fits in these little rubber grommets, which I guess I'm going to have to move into the um, the dashboard of my. 
pairing, wherever that might be. I'm gonna need more paint for it. So I'll just put this down here, that guy. These are parts going back on the bike. Um, now how do we get this off without slicing the heck out of all the cables? Okay, for reference, the gray and that black wire are going to this little bulkhead right here. Oh, this is funny. There you go. Okay, that's on that side. Now, these two wires are heading someplace. Over here. And it appears they're going to this here connector that's going to my switch. After much wailing and gnashing of teeth, it's always a problem trying to figure out connectors. Anyway, so you see this little tab right there? If you lift up on this, then that releases it off this little tit here and allows you to pull it out. Okay? So, that part is okay and the other half of this wire is over here now that one just pulls apart all right then So what we're looking for, we got these two connectors off here. Um, need to get those past the clutch cable. And whatever this bracket is right there. There we go. Now I can pull this out. Yay. Okay. One battle done. Hmm. Here's that missing socket. And so this screw is hold, basically holding on to the, uh, I don't know what it's doing. Those two screws are also holding on to our signal lights, which are going to go away. This is just holding on to the panel. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up those guys. Um, before I forget about it. Set that back in that frame. Dot. See that there? So that's going where that tab is right there. So they're fully seated and latched. Go ahead and take off the signal lights. Um, so you got a little connector here. See if I can succeed in breaking it. Okay. So green is right or starboard. The red tape on here. I don't know if I put that or they put that on, but that's uh, port. Now, if this is truly as a dirt bike, right? It shouldn't need signal lights at all. Right, right, right. Okay. 
It, uh, all my other Enduro bikes, I never use them. So I got this somewhat painted. It's not a brilliant job, but it's white. And uh, I can always pull it off later on after I get check the fitment of it. Not too sure how we're supposed to do this, but I'm thinking it's along these lines. The seat is supposed to hold these things down, just like that. And then we got another bracket. Um, that we got a bolt to the headstock. So that kind of gives us an idea of what we're getting close to looking like. This is going to be here. The beacon's going to like it. Let's pull this back off again. Set that right there. Now we'll look at the this part. So what's happening here is this little strap is going to go around the headstock and And come out on this side, which means all this stuff in here, it's in the way. And there's no instructions. So there's one screw up here. Um, and two screws down here. And a whole mess of tie wraps. So let's start cutting off tie wraps again. And hopefully I'm not going to be cutting my wires along this line. Oh, let's get rid of that guy. That little tire wrap down there. Oh no, not nah, just kidding. loosen things up again to where it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm just going to go one at a time and disconnect the cables and put them back on. So this is a little bit tougher. So, you know, I'm an ex-product development engineer. You know, I've got, these are all my patents. And if I was designing a KTM to make it easy to work on, um, when you're doing stuff like this, I wouldn't want to capture all these cables. So I th and you still want to get it supported. So I'm going to do something wild and crazy. I'm actually going to cut this this guy right across here. Um, and that allowed me to open this up enough to get these cables out. Scary, huh? All right. So these little guys have been cutting my um, 
Um, that part's in. Go over here. I just don't want to sit there and be fighting with this thing all day long. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so I still have the ability to put this screw in, hold it down. This screw there, the one up there, but for now, all I gotta do is just lift all these cables, shove them out that little opening, including the electronic fly-by-wire cables and there you go not bad huh okay that solved that issue <clears throat> that saved me like at least an hour of work So let's get back to uh, this. So theoretically, this is going to go around the headstock like this. And it's going to get attached, I think it's upside down, to the radiator guards. I think. I'm just guessing. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to have to go... Try to look at some pictures on Alberto de Torre's website and try to figure out how this gets attached. Okay, un momento por favor. Okay, gang, I, uh, Alberto sent me this photo. It shows that this bracket, this part here, is going down to the radiator on both sides so and this part here is a little being a little bit up and then um, the headstock has a little strap going around it just like that so let's go see if I can't make that look the same way um, First of all, I'll get the strap in here. I'm wondering how he wants me to do it. Okay, so I've got it stuffed right in there. Alberto, causing me to bleed. So, is it going to go in like that? I don't know. Let me go over to the other side.
Okay. And this part gets lifted up that far. And bring the the part that's cutting my fingers all up. <clears throat> So I took the bolts off of here. I think it's a little bit over constrained on both sides. Kind of let those flop in that way. I went so far as to, you see this little edge right here? I chamfered that on my uh, disc sander on both sides. That'll make the distance a little bit shorter that it make that radius the same. Is what's on there and you can see um, I was able to pull this together enough to get the screw started if we don't fatigue the metal I think this thing is can support a whole lot more than that so let's do the final get this thing going put a little allen wrench in case it starts I've got my uh, handy dandy gear wrench no, that's not a handy dandy gear wrench this is a handy dandy gear wrench if this will actually pull in instructions. So the, the advice is start with the strap and then go to the radiator. Um, okay, so this is my uh, brother-in-law, Dan. He's here to make fun of me. Um, so I need a T20 screwdriver to take these guys off. And we'll attach those to the fairing. And uh, put the seat on, that's the plan. because he's he's probably got a particular way to do this it's not so much wailing and gnashing of feet teeth I didn't see any need to paint the inside of it did you guys I don't think so all right buttons you pop in right that kind of sets up the, the distance well that's starting to look pretty decent So the side panels are on, held down with the snaps in the back, two screws, it's resting on here, 
Um, and this is supposed to then somewhere or another we get lifted up but let me put the seat on I'll go ahead and put something underneath here to just kind of lift it up. Like my glove. If you guys are doing the stock headlight, that's this, right? So, this is supposed to fit in like that. And, and mount on here, but It doesn't line up with the brackets, and uh, the hole is interfering with it. So this doesn't work out very well for the stock headlamp. Let's see what happens with the uh, Moto Minded. That'll drop in there at all. Well, it takes up a whole lot less space. And uh, so if, if I'm hazarding a guess, the bottom ones look like they line up. We're going to have a problem with the top, but I think a little bit of twisting, and, hope, and if I support it right, I won't be ripping it off the it really needs to have a blind uh, like a pim nut, a pim fastener because really there's no way in hell to get this thing okay I had a little trouble with this uh, getting my headlamp on and three out of four of the tabs were close enough but this top one I had to really kind of mangle it and twist it around um, to make it flat and parallel so there would be a lot of stress on it So, um, so right now I've got it actually there mounted. Then you got I plugged in my headlamp. These are the two uh, signal lights going off to the side if you're going to use them. Um, and then you got this the big jumble of mess stuff. Now all this I guess uh, can be tied to this middle brace because it doesn't move, right? It stays with the frame. The Speedo, um, it's going to be right about here, right? And the rest of the stuff will all be for the dog. Maybe a GPS, I don't know. Maybe I could shove this over here, put a GPS over to the side. Um, and then here's the The windshield. Well, 
Bet. That's kind of sort of what it's going to look like. Um, and then with this on the top, right? For all these, uh, dress all those cables out of the way but put this thing in like that and that's kind of how it's going to be okay that's about enough work today my uh, back is killing me and the dog is hungry okay we're back working that's another attractive possibility so let me think that thing through oh by the way uh, you'll see underneath here um, right there, I took the clamp um, and I put three washers on each side uh, to make that strap that goes around the headstock um, easier to see or more symmetrical. So let me close this off then. So before I get too carried away trying to figure out what these cables are. Um, I'm going to cut this bulkhead right here because when I mount it and then the bike you know goes this way the cables kind of crash into it. If I've got this all the way over you see it kind of binds right in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this along this line and see if we're I'm mounting this, these connectors, and what I was thinking about doing here, if this makes sense at all. on like this I've got a little bit more length for all my cables um, and I can tie some things down okay I've made an executive decision I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy down all right I'm on my third day of battling with my on this fairing um, I've been experimenting with different ways to tie this up um, let me go ahead and show it to you so everywhere that you can see that there's whoops so everywhere there's movement um, stuff that doesn't have to be moved I'm trying to tie to the, the center um, of the uh, of the mount here, right? See right there, there. This aluminum part that's going to the headstock. So, and I'm trying to make it as tight as possible in there. These cables go, or they they break in ABS. Uh, this is going off the main harness. Trying to keep it really tight and small in here. Um, and then the wire is going to the headlight is coming up uh, to this particular part. Um, I don't want to attach any cables to the headlight if I don't have to, although I just did, because if you pull the fairing off, then um, then you have to be cut and tie wrap. So I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of this tie here. Um, but in the meantime, so the um, air pressure sensor, um, I tied right here. Normally it was on a plastic bracket that I screwed up uh, cutting away on it. That's attached by the front fork uh, on the left uh, fork tube. And then the, 
I did put part of the cover, uh, the stock cover, back on on this half and cut it down. So you can see that um, in there to mount this little connector bulkhead. And I went and tied the um, the signal sensor uh, directly to the uh, the metal. Uh, the fairing mount right there with just by running a, um, a, a tie wrap through the little rubber part uh, that's on it and you go just do a loop around there so got that got that out of the way um, these are my accessory lights I still need to dress that up but um, that's how I'm handling the wires I got this uh, um, wire um, clamp. I uh, used to use a lot of these in the Navy and um, I'm using that to kind of support the wires going back and forth and um, again I'm, I'm really concerned that whatever movement I'm going to be doing um, on this harness um, that things aren't going to be crashing into, into each other. See like right now this, this part here uh, that's coming off that connector um, if when that comes over this way, you'll see it's it's hitting in the middle uh, on these little bundles. So if I can dress that down a little bit farther, then they won't be crashing when I slide it over. So that means I need to maybe look at maybe running it on the bottom side um, of this bracket, and then uh, bringing these cables in up through the top this way. And um, that would probably be a whole lot cleaner. So I'll probably cut that off, move that down. In the meantime, here's the cable for the speedometer, right? The speedo, I'm going to want to mount here, um, about like this. So when I'm looking at it, um, it's out of the way of the dog. It's up here toward the top. So what I've done, I've taken the mount that this is uh, normally attached to um, all right that's this guy here all right and this is normally mounted right here all right so I've taken that off and here's the fiberglass cover that came from Alberto and on, on the back side I flip this upside down this way and I use the magic marker you know uh, and I, and I uh, mark the holes including the opening for the um, the cable that's all right there and then I took the the grommets off this um, the speedo mount for the in instrument cl cluster and move those into the fiberglass. Now you see there's a, a pretty big gap in there. So what I'm thinking about doing, it's a 10 millimeter inside diameter hole of putting a washer on there and then putting some fiberglass on to reinforce it. Uh, it's, or some epoxy. We'll see how that goes. So, um, so now with this this way, I can take my Speedo Put that in the little rubber grommets. It's going to be very exciting to actually have a speedometer again. Um, and this is going to mount like this uh, behind the windshield. So that'll, that'll be all stuff down there like that. Cool, huh? I need to make sure that, see this little rubber boot? That has to go around the outside of this connector. And you can see there, it's not quite big enough. So I need to whittle that down a little bit more. Um, and I'm going to go off and do that now. So I've mounted the speedometer uh, where I wanted it. And there were some big gaps on the... Uh, 
instrument bulkhead and so I just uh, I matched the contour as best I could um, here so there's not as big a gap now I'm, right now I've got these cant twists on here and I'm going to go ahead and and lock this into position um, with the fasteners that uh, Alberto has supplied so we're going to go ahead and do that and what those look like what he gives you besides the the screws to mount the windshield on uh, are these push fasteners <clears throat> these push fasteners and he's given me six of them not too many, sure how many he wants me to put on but we could put all six of them on so basically you you drill a hole right in the fiberglass and then you you shove these things in and then you push this little center thing down you've seen these on your car all over the place so two would i can put two in for now and then put a third one uh for extra support um and try that i was actually down at my local auto parts store the other day and trying to figure out how i'm going to mount these and i actually pulled these off the shelf I was going to buy them, and then when I got home, I realized he'd already given me, so we were both thinking along the same lines. So let me go find a drill, and we'll mark these up. Okay, I've got these um, this cowling marked on where I think I want to drill the holes to support it. Now, one way, if you're trying to figure out what the edge is here, see this line that I've made, and you're trying to figure out what it is underneath it, all you got to do is take your flashlight and stick it up underneath there and you can you can see where the edge is see that you can see where that right where the edge is where Alberto has cut the bottom part and then you can kind of uh, work your way up by shining it underneath there so let me get my calipers and we'll see what kind of hole we think that they want. So, looks like it's eight millimeters. So as long as we're uh, not bigger than eight millimeters, I think things will happen okay. All right, so this is six, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill a couple holes and then I'll come in and finish finish it with an eight. So that looks like there now. Holds it into place. Dog is really eager to try it. So I think uh, that's about enough for tonight. Um, you notice that I've got these um, cable clamps in here to help dress up the cables and um, 
And the idea is that, of course, I don't want to be crashing into stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I'm thinking about painting this black. And I may do that tomorrow. Um, good morning. Good morning. Got a hiccup. Uh, I was experimenting with different graphics to put on this bike. You know, just to make it look cool. But you know that paint job I did? Uh, when I put this tape on, just to hold it there, it would peel off the, the paint, right? And then I I tried putting some graphics here and it peeled that paint off. So I don't really trust this, um, my earlier paint job. And um, so I'm going to take this back off again now that it's all set up. And uh, sand it down or strip it or something. I've created myself a lot of extra work. Um, I would wish this thing would have had a a really good gel coat on it um, that I could just start putting it on but it's a little bit more work uh, for me so anyway that's the situation right now okay so now got the fairing off we are watching Ayersburg. Okay, that's kind of fun. And I'm uh, taking this here paint scraper. And I'm taking all this paint off that I put on it. Some of it's coming off easy, others not so easy. And you have to be kind of careful because right here, I guess he had put some sort of putty or something there and I, when I ran the scraper across it, it peeled it right off. So I'm going to have to get some epoxy and I'll smooth that out. I've created so much work. It would definitely be worth another 100 euros if Alberto could put a nice finish on this thing and for a guy before it came to us. So I'm doing this. Dog is resting. And um, so that's what we're up to right now. Okay, I'm back. Here's Deacon. Hey, Deacon. Hi. We're still working on the 690. Um, got the tank attached. I'll show you how to do that. But we're back to doing this again. I've uh, had some voids when I took off the paint that didn't work. I put some uh, epoxy on here. Uh, quick curing, quick set. There's a couple other voids, uh, like right down in here. Anyway, so I'm going to paint that. I just got this plastics in. Uh, I still paint for plastic, white. And uh, one other thing I just did, I got some black for this, but I reinforced the back of it using pop rivets. Um, and the idea is that I can it can carry more weight. Put the GPS, and when Deacon puts his paws on the panel, you know, be right here. Then, um, and it puts puts push down on it. It's more reinforced. So, I'm going to paint this thing black. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to start painting this guy. So the directions on this say I'm supposed to. Um, do light coats within minutes of each other and if I'm going to do a then a, a, an overall second coat all together do it within the hour or wait 48 hours and then wait 5 to 7 days 
uh, for maximum paint adhesion. So I guess I should wait a week before I start trying to put any vinyl graphics on it. Maybe that was my mistake before. I painted it and went after it right away. I don't know. It's, uh, this stuff ain't fun. So, I'm just trying to think if I can hold on to this thing without getting myself covered in paint. I moved it into the garage area to get out of the direct sunshine. And we'll At this particular point, I don't really care how great the paint job is. I just want it white so I can put some graphics on it and get so I can ride and get ready for the KTM Orange event. Um, in about a month from now. So I just want the darn paint to stick. So I've wiped it, I've sanded it all down with 300 grit sandpaper. Um, so. I've got this hanging up here. Uh, I've already got some goobers on it because we dropped it when I was trying to hang it up. Right in there. You know, trying to keep some runs, but as it luck would have it, we started raining. It's all wet out there. Mike, I'm taking Daniel to his appointment. Okay, bye. There's the wife. So everything's wet. And so, in order to decrease the amount of humidity, um, Deacon's freaking out because of the thunder. I'm um, I put this fan on here to blow some air up, and uh, and hopefully that'll uh, help cure it, and make it dry quicker. I need more practice, obviously. So we'll see how it goes. I'll wait five days before I try to put stickers on it. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and spray my panel, the instrument panel, which I've reinforced uh, with the aluminum using pop rivets. And uh, I tried to adjust it so that I didn't change the arc. See that little nut under there? Um, so it's still got the curvature that Dottoria had designed into it. Um, and, and I found this uh, edging I can put on the panels, which I will put back on with some, some glue. And I'll um, wipe this down. Okay. Oh, nice thing about black, it, when it covers, it covers, you can see it really well. All right, that's all I'm going to do. All right, I've got the uh, control panel painted black with satin. Um, you can see the little rubber grommets I put in here and left enough room around the space here for the rubber boot that goes around the connector. And then here, because there's cables that are going to be rubbing, I've got this, this little um, extrusion and um, so I put that on there and just to keep it from um, 
falling off. I got some sun acrylate super glue and I'm gonna just put a little bit in there on this back side. Snap those in there. So just a quick sanitary sanity check on my wiring. Um, now I just need to attach the the bolts to these holes I put in earlier, and uh, it's going to look pretty good. I think the uh, the lights are clearing, so that was an early earlier issue. So let me go ahead and put these bolts in. I'm going to leave the windshield off for now as I play around to speedo, because uh, this is this is what's going to happen next. Is we'll have to see how well this thing all nests in here and um, and uh, the wiring how that moves around okay pretty sexy okay so what I'm working on right now is this uh, putting these uh, driving lights on the front I call them fog lights but it's really for people to see me in the desert uh, they don't run over Deacon and I. Uh, 